The ancients knew that Earth needed water. It needed running water to create negative ions. And therefore the ancients created creek beds and river beds in which water would run. And they did so with incredible precision. They did so meticulously with alternating hard and soft layers. Soft layers for earthquake mitigation, hard layers to keep the structure, because if you just have soft layers, the soft layers will just come out in the rainstorms and the erosion from the rivers. The technology that the ancients used to create long-lasting concrete sections that have no breaks in them, no cracks, okay? No fractures over thousands or millions of years, but end only at the section breaks that the ancients created themselves, right? This concrete is the key to long-lasting riverbeds. Standing among rubble that we would call geology, but which is in fact huge sections of extremely hard, extremely strong, extremely durable artificial concrete mixed in magic recipes by an advanced race in the distant past to create riverbanks so that Earth could have one more river. Why does Earth need rivers? I've gone into that in other videos. The water of Earth is the key to it all. And you say, but it does come out and eventually it does come out. So they're not perfect. Well, maybe they are perfect because as I've mentioned in other videos, we have potent soil creators and soil enhancers coming out slowly but surely from the soft earthquake mitigating layers. So my feeling is that the ancients knew that although the soft layers would mitigate earthquakes and keep their creek banks and river banks strong, they would also eventually come out through erosion, right? And that's what's happening. So they made the soft layers sulfur rich and rich in other minerals that would help plants survive and thrive and flourish on planet Earth. And so essentially what we have is natural ecological terraforming. <laughs> Ancient artificial terraforming of creek banks and river banks that would be eroded out by natural forces. So nature and culture work together. A high-tech civilization said we're going to work with nature for the benefit of those who live on this planet. Now I'm going to take a sample from one of these behemoth slabs of concrete. The question is, which one should I take it from? They all look so hard that it doesn't look like I'll be able to break anything off. It's a good question. How am I going to get a sample for laboratory analysis? I could probably take a sledgehammer to this concrete for about eight hours and not make a dent in any of it. So, I mean, I might get tiny little chips that come off. In fact, I'm sure that I could get little pebbles and chips that come off, but I want a good sample. So, it's a good question how to get a sample of this concrete. I mean, we have this, but then we, we can't determine for sure that this, that this is from one of those slabs. Although, it's fairly certain since, you know, we have various size pieces. It's just, uh, you know, right, right near to the uh, scene of the crime, as it were, the, the erosion. But it'd be nice to be able to break a piece off on video so we can see that it's definitely from a slab. Then we send it to the laboratory. That's what was done in the Bosnian Pyramid complex with the concrete in the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Five laboratories, actually six laboratories, said it was artificial concrete, ancient 
concrete heated to 500 degrees Celsius, approximately 900 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the slabs on the Pyramid of the Sun that cover the entire pyramid. And one of the labs retracted that and said it was probably Roman concrete. Graham Hancock said, came and said, oh, it looks like pudding stone, which is natural concrete. Well, uh, that's nonsense. It's not pudding stone. It's, those are slabs laid down on the pyramid. So Hancock ignored five definitive laboratory analyses of the concrete. He had to ignore that laboratory science to make that statement. It looks like pudding stone. Well, it doesn't look like pudding stone, first of all. <laughs> and the implication that it's natural is nonsense. So, and we know that it isn't natural from the laboratory analyses. That's why you do laboratory analyses, to find out data. And the data says that the Pyramid of the Sun concrete is, in fact, artificial. We would like to do a similar analysis of these concrete slabs, these massive concrete slabs, because obviously to the eye, this is concrete. And from other analyses that we've made here, decoding this creek bank, we've seen the inclination of the slabs into the hill, which is a, a clue that this is engineered. We've seen the sections and the non-fracturing, right, of the rest of the slab. So the rest of the slab stays integral, but then suddenly there's a section break. And yet, it doesn't feel like a break. It feels, it feels like a, a, uh, a constructed side, okay? There's a constructed feel to these, even though they're not the rectangular or square objects that we would create. But again, for earthquake mitigation, you do want to have irregular sized blocks. So, still looking for a, a piece that we can break off of this some kind of weakness in this ancient concrete. Now if we made concrete slabs and put them in a hill, they'd last a hundred years. That'd be a good, that'd be a good amount for us. Well these have lasted thousands or millions of years. And they're still strong, it's just that their supporting layers came out. <laughs> so now they're, now they're here. Now they've fallen. Fallen heroes. But they're still strong. We can't use these in modern times. We can't even repurpose these because they're too heavy. We can't do anything with these. They're just gonna sit here until the next flood comes down. The next really big flood comes down and moves them to the next property and then moves them to the next property year by year. And the, the sections will stay strong over the centuries and millennia. Let's move up here and see if we can find something we can use as a sample for the lab. Now this looks like less strong concrete right here because it's been eroded out at, at that bottom section. Interesting, right? See that erosion? Probably from the turbulence when the water goes past that tree. But again, we can see, pretty interesting, right? We can see the inclination into the hill. So the weight of these slabs is into the hill, into the face of the hill into the face of the creek bank. It's just genius, it's just genius. So from this mega slab, okay, we are going to take, or attempt to take a sample for the lab. And the sample will be right here. Oh boy. Pretty sure I can get this. I might have to use a stone to break it because I don't think it's gonna, ah, oh, there it goes. All right, we got it. We got ourselves a sample. So we know that this is, this is the piece, okay? And we're gonna send this to the lab, and I'm going to make a follow-up video, which you can see on this channel, okay? And we're gonna find out what modern-day science has to say 
about this little beauty right there, okay? This is Jock Doubleday reporting from the field on the Guadalupe River in Central Texas. It's November 17th, 2020, and we're tying up some loose ends here, sample-wise and laboratory analysis-wise, to attempt to bring light to human history and to the history of mysterious Terra herself. Interesting coloration inside, right? Get a photo of that. Let's even get closer if we can, if the camera allows us to do so without losing focus. Because we want to see everything about this magic recipe 